What's good? Hey everyone. What it do? What's poppin'? Her name is Ebony. His name is Eugene. And today's topic is how we overcame domestic violence in our relationship. Let's talk about it. Let's talk about it. 3G, 3G, 3G. Yeah, 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 yeah. I do what I do, I do what I do. You do it through me, 3G. Let's talk about it. So, I know you guys see our videos and we look like just this perfect, happy couple that has always been happy the whole time. But that is not the case. Our relationship was not like this when we first got together <laughs> not at all not at all go ahead and start us off before we met all right so before we met i was already i was already headed down the wrong road already so <laughs> that didn't really help our relationship um i already had a sense of wanting to do domestic violence with other people honestly i felt as though i could control other people by hitting them like that was just part of me and it, it brought this type of ego within myself you know thinking that i can just get over on any guy and that's how i felt so there's a background for me and what about you babe what's a little bit of your background before we met so before we met i was also headed down the wrong path so i remember you know hitting being hit you know, and getting into the relationship, that wasn't part of the plan. You know, I wasn't thinking like, man, I can't wait to get in this relationship so I can start hitting this person or this person's finna start hitting me. Those thoughts didn't come up at all. So once it happened, it just kind of happened. You know, now keep in mind, you know, sometimes we are exposed to this massive violence growing up. Mm -hmm. You know, whether it's within our home, family members' homes, friends' homes, or something that we're exposed to, you know, via entertainment. Yeah. You know, all these different ways, it gets into our subconscious. Yes, it does, definitely. So then, you know, we got together, you know, not knowing each other. And for you guys that don't know, we moved in together in two weeks. So <laughs> we don't know each other at yeah. all. And we don't recommend that for anyone. <laughs> Please don't do that. <laughs> Although it worked out, in our case, I promise you, the odds of it working out are very slim. But it is possible. But it's very slim. So. So, as we are getting to know each other, and as we are seeing how angry we can get with one another, with ourselves, with situations, it got nasty. It got really ugly really fast. I would say probably within that first month it was bad and it would consistently go on very true for various scenarios and situations it would happen now keep in mind to make that shift from having domestic violence being a part of your relationship and removing it it takes one big thing accountability mm -hmm. You have to look at yourself, look at your spouse, and take accountability for the role that you're playing within the violence. And until you both get into the situation where you can say this is wrong and this needs to stop and there's no trying to justify any of it, it's going to be very, very difficult for your relationship to become healthy. I agree because we were doing this for about a year and a half, physically and mentally. Physically and mentally. And the big thing to keep in mind, mentally and emotional abuse is just as bad as physical yeah. abuse. There's no, well, at least I'm not hitting you, cussing at someone, demeaning someone, threatening someone, scaring someone. Trying to manipulate someone by these means is wrong. Yeah. In all facets. And it can happen female to male or male to female. It goes both ways and both are wrong. And they are. And it was hard. It was hard, you guys. Um, you know, having to deal with that every, almost every day. You know, having to deal with that and 
crying and emotions and bruises and blood like it, there was nothing pretty about it and like you said it's it's you have to look at yourself you have to look at your spouse you have to look at your situation and when enough is enough enough is enough and you make that choice you make that decision yourself it's not like gonna magically happen you have to change literally and we can pray and that's great things to do as well we can pray over our situations like oh i wish things can change but really a lot of it is looking at yourself looking at yourself sometimes people want to point at the spouse and say oh you're doing this wrong you're doing this wrong you always do this blah blah blah. but a lot of it starts with ourselves, and that's what i realized me as well so if you're in an abusive relationship you guys have to speak now. Mm -hmm. You have to communicate now. You both have to acknowledge that this needs to stop right now. Yeah. And once you do that, there is no more bringing it up. There is no more trying to use these tactics, trying to threaten, trying to belittle, trying to scare. And if you cannot do that, that relationship is not going to work. Yeah. And if it does work, it's not going to be a healthy relationship and you don't just go from toxic to being healthy overnight you don't. it is a process so keep that in mind but once you guys come to that agreement that you're going to stop that it has to stop yes there is no well i, I because of this or right. this is why there is no justifying domestic violence nothing not no situation justifies it none in most relationships that involve domestic violence i believe it's very rare for it just to stop and for that relationship to continue on without domestic violence yeah via any form yeah mental physical emotional spiritual however or whatever so we can't tell you whether or not your relationship is worth fighting for. Right. That is something that you both have to sit down and talk about this. And if you cannot talk about it, that is a big red flag. It is a super big red flag. And there's nothing wrong with getting counseling and having mediators. But you too need to be able to communicate yeah. about this. Yeah. One on one at some point sooner than later. There's nothing wrong with getting help to initiate it, to yeah. help you guys talk about it, to verbalize it, to communicate it. But at some point, you're going to have to take the reins of your relationship because yes. you are the two that are going to be alone every day with each other. Yes. So only you two would know if what you're a part of is worth fighting for because many people lose their lives. Or deal with severe injuries. Yeah. Or deal with severe trauma or psychological issues due to domestic violence. So we can't tell you whether you should or should not be together. But we do know it needs to stop ASAP. It does. So you don't go down that road we we don't need more people going down this road because it's not a healthy road and we want you to find joy and we want you to find peace and happiness within your relationship because that's what you deserve you deserve to be happy you deserve to feel good in your relationship you deserve to be loved you are loved yes definitely and a lot of times it starts within you personally it's good for us to work on our issues mm -hmm. but i also need to work on my personal issues because yeah. there's issues that are within me that she has no part of that are contributing to the domestic violence. I think so, that's a big one. Definitely. So you one. can't always just look at your spouse and use your spouse as a reason or for justification. Because at some point, it doesn't matter. Yeah. And I'm so thankful and grateful that at this point in our relationship, domestic violence isn't even an issue. At all. It's not even a topic that has to come up. Even um, as far as cussing each other out, that's not even in the picture. Not even yelling at one another. So just to come from a relationship where we were yelling, cursing, and hitting to a relationship to where we're no longer yelling, cursing, or hitting. When we have issues, we can communicate through them. Sometimes we may need our individual time before we come together and communicate these things. Right. But I'm so thankful that nothing's being thrown. 
Nothing's being broken. Nothing's being shattered. I'm so grateful too. <laughs> Super grateful. I'm so thankful. <laughs> and we can't even promise you. These are tears of joy because we've came a long way. It's so easy to look at relationships and just assume that they've always been how they are. But sometimes we have no idea what people have been through, went through, or what they're going through behind the scenes. And the only reason we can talk about this openly is because it is something that we have overcome in our relationships. And that's why we're bringing this video for those who may be in a domestic relationship right now. Stop it. Communicate. Do whatever you need to do to make sure that it ends. It's not the way that any relationship should be or needs to be. And that's what this is all about. So we're not saying that every relationship that is abusive is just going to turn into a healthy one. We're saying that it can and if you both are willing to stop fighting one another and fight for each other, it is more than possible to turn a domestic relationship into a healthy and thriving and loving relationship. I agree. <laughs> <laughs> so with that being said, if you feel in the transparency and you feel in the vibe like and subscribe and if you're not just leave us a thumbs up anyways <laughs> that'll work hit the notification bell as well yes and we out